All right, the vlog has officially made it out of Las Vegas. We're here for about a week in Austin. We're here for the monster meetup game at the Lodge Poker Club. I'm sure if you follow all these vlogs, you've seen it. Brad Owen, Andrew Nimi, Doug Polk, all here all week long and our first time out of Vegas. So when you get to the lodge, you're gonna need to become a member, which check the prices before you get there. Ours was only a dollar because they were having a sale and you have to pay $10 an hour to play because they don't collect rake. And then you get your name on the list and you're good to go. How excited are you to be here? The first meetup game that we've been to outside of Vegas. Was it like a scale from zero to 10? Yeah. 14. Nice. Is that just because you have coffee? Coffee got me to like 12. All right. Jesse and I sat down at the same table. It was a quiet little table at first. I've heard a lot about the action and wild play down in Texas, so I'm ready to experience it for myself. We buy in for 1K and immediately we get involved in a hand. Button opens to 15 and we are in the small blind with King Jack offsuit and make the call. Flop comes down queen 10, three, two clubs. I check it to him and he quickly checks back. Turn brings a five of hearts. I lead out for 25 here. Gonna start pushing my equity with the open-ended button makes the call. River comes to seven of clubs and I'm gonna just continue with my bluff here. I lead for 60 this time, hoping that I can get a fold from a 10 or something that was hanging on on the turn that's gonna let it go on the river. I don't think he really checks back a flush draw on the flop too much, but like I said, we just started this game, so I don't really know anything about this player. He quickly calls, snaps us off, and turns over 10 seven of diamonds. So he river two pair, nice hand. Only 20 minutes into this game and everyone starts straddling a 10. Low jack raises only to 20. High jack calls 20 and the button three bets to 60. Small blind just cold calls the 60. So now it's gone min raise, just call, three bet tiny and cold call. So to me, that screams a lot of dead money. And I am so excited to see pocket nines when I look down in the big blind. I make it 200. The effective stacks are about 1K, except for the three better who had about 450. So I think everyone else is not too strong, to be honest, with their sizings and with just calling from the small blinds perspective. So I think the button has the most nutted range and the smallest stack for me to worry about. So it's pretty clear four bet here. So I four bet to 200, everyone folds, and we take down all the dead money. So in another straddled pot, Cutoff, who was the same guy from the first hand, raises to 25. I'm on the button with King Jack of Diamonds and make the call. Heads up to a flop of Jack, Jack, three, rainbow. We absolutely smash it, flopping trips. Cutoff, C bets for 20. We slow play, make the call. The turn is an ace of spades, bringing it back to our flush draw. Cutoff checks, and I'm gonna bet, I was just trying to figure out what size to go. I made it $80. He didn't really think too long before folding. And just like that, Andrew Nimi sits down at our table and kicks up the action quite a bit. He was not impressed by our $10 straddles. And in this one, it goes, I make it $10 straddle, Jesse's 20. I forget his name, makes it 40 and Andrew makes it $80. So we're just at a casual two five all the way up to 80 big blind game. Folds around to me in the $10 straddle. I think I have about a thousand to start this hand, but with an $80 straddle, that's a little more than 12 big blinds technically. So when I peel ace four of clubs, nothing left to do but go all in. <laughs> so that's what I do. I jam it all in and we start sweating the cards with Andrew. What do you got? Okay. The <laughs> All right, so Andrew makes the fold and one orbit later, same thing happens. Straddles all the way up to $80. Andrew's in the $80 straddle. I'm in the $10 straddle and look down at King Nine of Hearts. I only have a little more than last hand. Kind of the same situation. I don't really want to do anything else but go all in. I mean, I'm all in. <laughs> well, here's all in. Why so long, huh? All right, we got a six. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, we got a little four. info. It's a six. I mean, 
<laughs> that was pretty. It was pretty. <laughs> Make out. <laughs> now she's got the moves. I mean, we need to give Andrew an 80 spot. <laughs> so around this time, I'm feeling good. I want all these crazy straddle pots when Brad comes over and asks Jesse and I if we wanted to be a tag team and go play over in the live stream. Obviously we said yes, sounded like a great time. I started racking up my chips and head on over to the stream. All right, so we're about to jump into this live stream right behind me. Found out about this like uh, 45 minutes ago. So let's see how it goes. We're doing a tag team, which is kind of cool. So Jesse's gonna be switching off with me. Andrew and Brad are gonna be switching off, I think. Rampage and Wolfgang are switching off. So yeah, this is gonna be really cool. So while I have played a tag team WSOP event before, I had never played a tag team cash game before. And if you're unfamiliar, it's pretty simple. At any point, it could be mid-hand, it could be mid-decision. If you don't feel like making the decision, you could turn around and tag your partner. They have to sit in the chair and take over the hand. So it was a really fun game. I was really excited to try it out in a cash game format. And it was just all really exciting because only, you know, less than 24 hours earlier, I was on a plane headed out here with no idea that I would be ending up in this game. So the first hand that we enter a pot, folds around to the hijack, it's a straddled pot. I have no idea who this guy is. He makes it 45. And I looked down at king, queen offsuit in the cutoff. Pretty good blockers to some of the best hands he could have. Plus I have a lot of people behind me who could squeeze. So I don't want to flat this hand. So I elect to three bet, make it 150 to go. Folds back to him and he makes the call. Paul comes down ace, four, deuce with two clubs. And when he checks it to me, I have a pretty easy C bet. So I C bet 110 and he pretty quickly makes the call. Turns the six of clubs. Checks it over to me. I'm gonna check this one back a lot, even if I do have an ace. So that's what I do here. Plus, you know, I have king high and uh, pretty much I'm giving up. The river comes in offsuit eight. And when he checks again pretty quickly, I think he would think about it with an ace. So I choose to bluff here because I can still rep an ace. Like I said, I would have checked back the turn with those hands and I think I can get him to fold under pairs. Yeah, so I go for it. I Before I could even get my bet out there, he snap folds. I, I was trying to make it 300. I could even go a little bigger. Yeah, he snap folds and we get a tiny little bluff through. All right, we've broken out the wine. We've got a lot of wine going. Jesse hasn't played a single hand yet. The stack is still the same. Well, it's not the same, but I haven't played a hand yet. <laughs> but uh, the He's ladies are about though. to get in He's there. Straddling. I've been very Turned aggressively straddled. Yeah. He's been straddling. Okay, so one of the first hands I play at the table, I open king jack of spades under the gun one. The hijack makes a larger size three bet, and the big blind cold calls. This is kind of a weird spot. I can four bet, I can call. I decided to do something unique because I thought it would be fun for the game. Anyways, I, I tag Ashley in in the middle of this hand. I figured a couple things could happen here that are really good. If Ashley decides to four bet, First of all, it might look stronger, like maybe I tagged her in and gave her like the layup four bet with aces. I know generally her image is a little bit nittier than mine, so it might work out. Also, I just think the psychological effects are really cool here. They don't really know why I tagged her in and it could go different ways. So I thought this would be something fun to do. And she decides to just call, which is definitely somewhat standard. All right, well, I didn't know any of that. He didn't give me any heads up about what he thought that I should do, maybe four betting, but so I sit down, see a suited connector, think it's a pretty obvious call, and we see a flop three ways. Once we get this flop, I was like, I'm out of here, and tag Jesse right back in. So we hit the flop pretty hard here. Uh, we flop a gut shot, flush draw, and an overcard. The hijack does something I don't expect, and they overbet the flop three ways. Uh, folds back to us, and we have a decision between shoving and just calling. Normally I would shove here, but I kind of got the feeling in-game like they might be quite strong. Maybe based on the sizing, maybe the, the timing. But I basically decided that I thought they were quite strong, which means that they often have ace queen or better or something like kings or aces or maybe even an ace high flush draw and against that range i actually decided i'd prefer to just call if i think that they don't have that many bluffs the turn is the queen of spades which is obviously great for us but also when we check call and over bet on the flop we have a queen a lot here we have spades a lot here uh, we have some sets 
So by the time we get to the turn, it's very hard for us to not have quite a strong hand here. This is also not a great turn card for our opponents who have a lot of over pairs compared to how many queens they have in their range. So I definitely think leading is super important here. And I go quite small because it's actually quite hard for me to have a bluff here. So I don't think I need to go very large. Additionally, if I go small, I can still jam the river uh, very easily without having to make a big over bet. So he just calls turn, which is something I think he should be doing basically every single time. The river is the deuce of spades, which we are not thrilled about. I have a decision here between a small block bet and checking and bluff catching. I decide to go with the small block bet. I think that it just ends up playing better in game. My opponents do something kind of funny and start talking to each other and our opponent subs out for his partner, which is probably a really good sign for our hand in general. They end up making the call very quickly after they sub out and we win the pot. So here Wolfgang opens on the larger side and gets three calls all by players who I think would just three bet if they had a really good hand. And it folds to us and we have pocket tens. I decide that this is a really necessary squeeze spot because of all the dead money in between us. So I make it 310 and behind me Skull Mike starts tanking. So it turns out they got the graphic wrong and he actually had a stack size that was very similar to ours. With the price that we're getting, I think we're about the zone where if he's shoving nines or better and maybe like all the ace queens, we have a pretty easy call. And if he's shoving like tens or better and maybe like ace queen suited or better, it's actually probably a fold. No way what the Jesse fuck? Sylvia's gonna, gonna fold. What happened to our money? Wait, what is, is Jesse tanking here? When I came in here, we had $1,800. Okay, hold on. Okay, so. Oh my God, could you imagine if he folds here? There's no way fold! Jesse folds here. Fold! There's no way. Fold! <laughs> Unless stack sizes are off. I kind of felt like the line was right around there. I really I really didn't see him do anything super out of line so far, although I will say I spent most of my time drinking wine, so it's not like I had crazy good reads on anyone. But I did feel like he had played pretty reasonably, so I decided to make a somewhat nitty fold. I find out later that Mike had pocket sixes, which honestly makes me look like kind of an idiot for making this fold. I still think it's a somewhat reasonable fold. I don't think that that many people end up shoving this light. So the wine is certainly flowing at this point. We're having a good time. I look down at eight, seven of hearts under the gun, one, open it up, standard raise to 30, folds around a Wolfgang in the cutoff who makes the call with Queen Jack offsuit, so he's getting frisky. I'm going to let Brad Owen and Andrew Neamey do the rest of the commentary. And Ashley Sleeth, who recently started the poker vlog that's taken off, so if you're not familiar with her, check out uh, her YouTube channel. That's awesome. And she makes the call. And then we've got Rampage and Wolfgang here in the cutoff. It's 120 to call. Queen Jack offsuit. Not really the hand that you want to be calling three bets with, but because uh, you can easily be crushed by, let's say, Ace Queen offsuit, for instance. Interesting flop because nobody has anything here. We've got a gutter and two overs. We check it. Are we are we giving up here, Andrew? Or what's the plan? I don't really want to say anything. Because you know what happened. All right, all right. So Slick Rick and I will, will commentate on this one. Slick Rick, what would what do you do here? Well, you he, check? he just checked, so I think he might be giving up on this. Unless Ashley, see what happens here. Has a gutter to uh, the absolute nuts. I mean, Everybody's drinking the cab out of the Oh, she's going to make a rather large bet, 300. I remember always seeing groups like with like, I think with two overs, Wolfgang's going to fold, but he does. Wolfgang's out of there pretty easily. Kind of a weird spot for me here. I mean, drawing to the bad end of the gutter ball here with two players. I mean, I'm only up against First Ashley of all, here. Ashley, look at how innocent she is. She's smiling. Uh... Just complete BS by Ashley. I think we can all agree. And just because Andrew was so nice on the commentary and so nice to fold his $80 straddles earlier, this time I straddle for $80, give him some action. Here's what happens. So seat six, team TM and Thomas opens the $20 straddle to 300. So a little more than three X. It folds to me. I have a little more than 20 big blinds effective in this spot. 
And, you know, as tournament players, we study these short stacks a lot. You don't actually want to play these suited connectors too often with a short stack because you kind of want to hand with more absolute value that can flop top pairs and get it in, right? You're not going to see three streets a lot with 20 bigs, so. <laughs> but we're on a live stream. We're, uh, we're having a good time. I throw in the 300 and just hope for a miracle. So we get the dream flop. It's about as good as it gets for six high. It comes down 10, seven, four rainbow. Our opponent does lead 500, which makes it a little bit awkward because I don't really perceive this to be a situation where we have a lot of fold equity. Nothing much to do here. Just have to go for it. Oh, she rips it. I love, I love this. This, this is awesome. Uh, very results oriented because I know exactly what Tim and Thomas have. Uh, and this is Tim here. And he's got no decision. He's going to be folding. Yeah. But he is going to uh, waste all your guys' this time. And I would agree. I definitely didn't think he was going to think this long, but he sat here for about two minutes. So please enjoy my faces while my opponent is in the tank. Ashley grabs the wine. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess he's like, well, it's only a thousand more. No. Wow. He's cutting out chips. I mean, this is, I, I guess I didn't see this uh, fully developed, so. I mean, this is a, not so a great hand. So she it for 1.5 into 1,200, right? And the pot's 2.7 well, total. Bet, he bet 500, and she jammed all in for 1,000 more. I mean, I still don't see how he calls here, but. Yeah. Credit to him, I guess, for thinking about it, to be honest. Like, I, I want to get some input here if I could. Not really. I, mean, I guess I wouldn't expect you to so much, but uh, <laughs> were there any questionable spots? In Only that East that? Queen spot where, like, you know, I could float from out of position. 5-4-3 flop or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not really that interesting, I don't think. It seemed like a standard, uh, standard fold for the most part. So at this point, we're four hours into the session. Things are winding down, and it had been kind of a running joke between the commentators and even people at the table making comments about how tight our seat had been playing. But honestly, if you watch the stream, you'll notice that our card distribution, it was just a poor card distribution. We ran pretty bad in terms of starting hands. We had a great time, but the cards weren't really cooperating. But in this hand, that all changes because Rampage opens the low jack to 40, button calls, and I looked out at it, pocket kings in the big blind. This is a straddled pot, so there's a straddler behind me, but this is an easy squeeze spot. That's what I do. I squeeze to 220 and everyone folds and again makes those comments about how tight our seat had been playing. I only bring up this history because in this hand, we pick up pocket kings again. And after a few glasses of wine, after all these comments and little jokes and little needles at us for being so tight, I think that that is what changed my mindset during this hand. Less than 10 minutes later, Doug Polk is under the gun one. He opens to 15, and I looked out at Pocket Kings again. I'm in the hijack and three bet to 50 bucks, and the small blind is Team May. He cold calls the three bet. Wolfgang is in the big blind and elects to cold four to 200. So now things are starting to get interesting. Everybody else has much deeper stacks than we do. I have 2,300, I believe, to start the hand maybe a little more, something like 2,400. Doug calls the four bet, and now I have a decision to make. And like I said, all that's running through my head is that not even 10 minutes earlier, everybody snap folded, made fun of how tight we are to any aggression from me. So I just called right here. This is not something I would normally do. I would always re-raise this, but I just had that ringing in my head and for some reason, just click call. Probably would make more money by re-raising pre, unless everybody just decided to fold. <laughs> but in the moment, that's what I did. I just called, hoping to get really sneaky and shove over somebody's C-bet, or you know, raise and get it in over somebody's C-bet. May calls the four bet behind me, and now we're four ways to a flop. And let's just fast forward all the way to the river because it was a pretty terrible flop, terrible run out by the river, but it checks all the way down in this huge four bet pot. 
On the river, it checks to Doug again, and he decides to bet. Pretty, I think, trivial fold on our part. We still have the other two behind that could either either have a straight, a flush, etc. Doug could have a flush, a straight. I just make the fold. Everybody else folds, and Doug happily whips over his cards, shows that he was bluffing, shows that he just attacked all of our capped rages on the end there, and totally owned our soul. But yeah, so pretty embarrassing way to end the night. But honestly, because of the history beforehand leading up to this, I'm not sure actually if I would have done anything differently going back. It's just unfortunate that we got such a terrible run out here. Actually, something that would have been really cool is if is once Doug called the four bet, I should have just tagged Jesse in. That would have been really cool because they would not know what to make of that, like if it's a really close decision or not. That would have been a really cool way to like use the tag team element in this hand. But, you know, keep that in mind for future Lodge stream tag teams, if it ever happens again. All right, this is Jesse's first time outroing, but how much did we buy in for? Can you remember? 1,000. <laughs> the day we won like 900 i think you won like 900 and i lost like 600. <laughs> we won some money but we had a lot of fun that was yeah, the big thing we, a we had a lot of fun everybody here is awesome how did you guys do team personality uh, we, over we there feel, we feel like we won a million dollars yes ma'am small loss small loss 500 dollars loss not even sometimes in poker a small loss is just like a huge win yeah, I think you guys one did, of those. I think How'd you guys do? We lost a little bit. Tiny bit. Tiny, Tiny bit. bit is great. See, small losses. Small losses is a win all around.